Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ballet Ray. Today, we're going to be sharing with you our top 10 very favorite ballet steps. <laughs> so as dancers, we have a whole vocabulary mm -hmm. of different ballet steps that we do on a regular basis. Some of them are very hard and we don't like them very much. We listed all of those here. Some of them we just do it like, yeah, that's fun, it's okay. But then there's just a handful, the select few that are exceptionally fun. The ones we actually get excited over and that we rejoice over when it's actually in the choreography or in yeah. the combination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so today that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be sharing with you just a few of our favorite things. Things, as in like ballet steps, obviously. Are you excited? I'm excited. If y'all are hyped for this video, make sure you hit the like button and we will. Just like our other top 10 video, we categorize all our favorite ballet steps into categories. So there's our turning category, our jumping category, and then we have a point slash etc yeah. steps because ones that didn't really fit anywhere else. <laughs> but yeah, those are th our three categories for today and I'm really excited. My favorite turn, or like the turns that make me the most excited to do is PK turn, but not just PK turn, but PK turn manege. Yeah! Oh, I love manege! For our non-dancers, PK turn manege simply means you're doing PK turns, but instead of going like in a straight line, you're traveling in a circle around the stage. Maneges are fun, and honestly, they're kind of a staple ballet, like repertoire vocabulary. They usually happen like at the end of a variation, mm -hmm. so they are quite frequently used. I think what I like about it is that it is fun, and it's fast, but it's not super difficult. Yeah. Yet, it's a huge crowd pleaser. Uh huh. Yeah, you do a PK turn manege. It feels it feels fun. It feels good. You can breathe really well during PK turn manege. Yet you hear the crowd being like, "Wow!" It feels like high reward, I guess. Yeah. I think it's because it has a really good excitement factor mm -hmm. because you're doing all these turns and you're just charging down the stage. You know, you're eating up all this space. Yes. I also like any kind of turning manege. Yeah. It doesn't have to be straight PK turn. You can add, you know, suit to new turn. You can add like little jumps and stuff here and there. Like there's yeah. a lot of different variations on the PK turn manege. Those are also super fun. It adds a little bit of spice and a little bit of like something fun in there that mm -hmm. keep it interesting. So yeah, I love PK turn manege and just Menages in general. Your turn. Favorite turn. My favorite turn. Shenay turns. For those of you that don't know what Shenay turn is, basically you're turning by taking these tiny little steps. We'll show a video up here. The thing about this one, again, low effort, high reward. It looks impressive because from a non-dancer perspective or from a viewer perspective, you're turning really fast. And you are. You are turning mm -hmm. fast. But what's nice about it is you're always on two feet. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. basically just doing this only you're you're turning i think once you get in the rhythm if you're at a tempo where you can spot on the music yeah it's the most satisfying thing if you have a good tempo music and you just bam 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 i don't know yeah. it's just the best feeling it's funny because when you're doing it it feels like you're turning a lot slower than when you're an audience member watching it yeah. for us it feels like you're doing step turn step turn step turn yeah which is like half time yeah. but for the audience it looks like it's really fast and also as like a dancer if you're wearing a tutu or a skirt or something and you do the shenay turns and the skirt flies out like this yeah it's like <laughs> It's the best feeling. <laughs> it's pretty great. Next category is jumping. I think most dancers, I mean, there are, of course, the archetypes that they call, you know, like you're either a jumper or a turner, but I kind of feel like most people like jump. <laughs> I can't remember any dancer who didn't like, okay, maybe not Petit Allegro. Like, there's a lot of people who hate Petit Allegro. Yeah. But Grand Allegro, I feel like no one ever had an issue. So that's probably why our top favorite jumps are in the big jumping category. Uh, you wanna go first for this one? Sure. One of my favorite jumps, Born and Bill Jeté. So, so, so good. I think, I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's the preparation into it. You did the little, either a chasse or a precipite. And somehow the amount of momentum that you get it's just really good. So, I think also the line in the air is very pretty. The line in the air is beautiful. I think also the Born and Ville Jeté is probably the most conducive jump to achieve ballon. That's, that's true. I think it really is. And for one who really loves that feeling of ballon, yeah. I feel like every dancer loves the feeling of ballon. Yes. So that's probably why it's one of my favorites. My favorite jump, aside from Soda Shaw, I don't think there's a dancer who didn't like Soda Shaw. Oh. We'll put a clip in here. Soda Shaw, but it's like one of the most standard and popular jumps. So I'm gonna give you another one. The Russian Padasha. 
This one is so much fun. It's like a soda shot and a pot of shot together. Uh -huh. And I think it's really fun. It's also very conducive for ballon, as you said, like for born in Vilgete. It can give you that sense of hanging in the air and it's very easy to achieve that. I just like the feeling. It feels like you're just like, what chow? Yeah. <laughs> what chow? <laughs> it's like one of those like action figure poses. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm just secretly a ninja. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. My other favorite jump is without a doubt a soda bosque. So a soda bosque, it's a jump, but it's also a turn. So it's a turning jump. We'll put a video up here because it's really hard to describe it. I love this step so much. You get your momentum from that first brush mm -hmm. and then you pull in, pull it all in. for the momentum for the turn yes. when you pull it into that passe. So everything just really fits together and all the movements that you do, it just works together to make the step happen yeah. so perfectly. You barely have to force anything. You just go for it and it has such a beautiful rhythm. Again, it's really easy just to get off the ground. It almost feels like you don't have to jump at all, hardly. Yeah, it feels light, like skipping stone. They just go like blink, 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 blink. Yeah, like that. It, it yeah. feels like that. Even to watch Soda Boss, like visually, it's just a really nice look. It's very dynamic, I think. It's not a static jump. There's a lot of action and there's a lot mm -hmm. of excitement. Yeah, there's so. the brush, the pull-in, and the turn, and then the landing. It's just yeah. very, it's very interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. And now we're going into specific point work steps and sort of the random steps that didn't fit in the other category. <laughs> and we're gonna be starting with one of my favorites, which I think a lot of you already know, Hops on Point. Yes. <laughs> we actually had this one in our hardest ballet steps list, but it can be hardest and also one of her favorites. This one kind of bridges the gap. They are difficult. I feel like it's a real rest step. Yeah. It's a true rest step. Like at the end of Giselle's variation, those hops that she does, yeah. it's like, <gasps> You can breathe a little. Mm -hmm. At the end of the Raymonda variation, you breathe a little before you do your PK turn or <laughs> yeah. whatever. It's just your time to calm your heart rate down. Mm -hmm. And it's small, repetitive, yet it's again a wow factor for the audience. Yeah. Because it's, it's rewarding to perform it, you know? It is. It's fun. It's fun. It makes us excited to see you, the audience, excited. Yeah, it really, it really helps us to power through the variation. Mm -hmm. Your turn. So this step is kind of a bit of a weird one. I don't think anybody aside from an actual dancer has ever heard of it. Maybe you have, but it's called a precipite. It's sort of a connecting step in the sense of it's not really a big statement step on its own. It would be more of a lead in to one step or right. it'd be connecting two steps together. Right. We'll put a video up here, but it's basically a little, almost a glissade, but not yeah. quite, not right. quite a glissade. And there's a lot of different kinds of precipitate. So. There's the precipitate where you do a little pas de cheval, and there's the one where you do, it's almost like a ton de flesh, almost. Yeah, there's a lot of different variations of precipitate. And it's a small thing, but it makes me so happy. Because of the way rhythmically and visually it adds a little extra detail. So instead of just doing, for instance, if you're doing PK arabesque, fai, PK arabesque, fai, it's just one and two and three and four, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas if you added PK arabesque, fai, precipite, arabesque, fai, precipite, it would be one and two, da da, one and two, da da. So it just adds. A little like Rhythmic. je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I like it especially when it's done slow. It's like at the beginning of Giselle. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Those ones where you can kind of like. It, this one also, you can get some hang time in the air. Mm -hmm. That little bit of elevation before you go into that next step. Yeah. Rhythmically, it adds a layer, an extra yes. layer on top yeah. of the base choreography. Mm -hmm. It just adds a little accent here and there. Yeah. I hope y'all can relate. Maybe this is the universal thing. Maybe. I just think it's super fun. It is. Another beautiful, beautiful step that I think is one of the most, and not underappreciated, but it's just never mentioned. Everyone talks about arabesque pirouette. Yeah. You know, the Grand most jeté. common. <laughs> jeté. Uh -huh. Yeah, everyone talks about those steps, but mm -hmm. no one talks about this one, but somehow it's in every single piece ever. It's everywhere. And it is relevé developé or PK developé. It's basically in, kick your leg. Basically, yeah. Basically fancy kicks. Yeah. <laughs> and it's in almost every single, I would dare to say it's in every single piece of rap. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's like a staple step. Mm -hmm. And it's fun. It's a really, it's a beautiful step, 
I think with the range that we work so hard to achieve, like in our flexibility training and our strength training, Releve Developé or PK Developé feels really easy after that. And then it kind of showcases, you know, how much you've accomplished in terms of, you know, all of that training. And the thing about it is it, it's so popular and so commonly done in ballet rep, but it happens to be so much fun. So we get to do this fun stuff all the time. Yeah. And that's just great. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I have one more in this category and it has to be honestly one of my very favorite steps in general and that is the run per se. Oh, the run per se! <laughs> yes! If any of you dancers can agree with me on this, with us on this, <laughs> comment down below. Let us know if you love the run per se. I feel like there's a lot of ways you can do run per se. Mm -hmm. It's very versatile, a very versatile step. Basically what it is is like a windmill, I guess you could say. <laughs> you step into it, usually it's like a fayi through, and this already sets the tone for a very sweepy yeah. step. And then once you go into the rond verse, it's like you see the arm, then you see the leg, you leave your head, and you sail around. It feels yes. so freeing. It feels like you're defying gravity, mm -hmm. but in slow motion. It feels like a jump in slow motion, but like super, super luxurious super beautiful and you can do them in so many different ways there's some of them that are actually quite punctual and sharp yeah. looking there's a lot of very fun renditions of the run per se and it just looks beautiful mm -hmm. especially if you're wearing a big platter tutu you can uh -huh. see the full circle of the tutu it's yeah really beautiful. all the design work yes. that your costume mistress put into your tutu will get to be shown off in run per se exactly 10 out of 10 would, would recommend, recommend. <laughs> guess what a bonus category. <gasps> so the bonus category is, it's still ballet steps, cause we use it in rep, but it's not a traditional, like what you would put in a book of technique. Like you would have plie tendu and like yeah. all of those steps in a, in a book, but you wouldn't exactly put these ones in your book. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's still a ballet step. So one of those is the waltz turn. Yes. It's basically literally a waltz. It's beautiful. You can do it solo. You can do it with a partner. It's yeah. really, really fun. And you can really just eat up space. I think that's the thing that's the most fun about mm -hmm. it. Especially when you're doing multiple or doing them in a circle. That's really fun. Yes. The other thing I like about the waltz turn is that it is the perfect pace for breathing. Yes. You go breathe in and out and in and out and it's the perfect way to catch your breath when you're doing like a long you know divertissement or like a core piece but that's that's a really good way to get yourself back into your rhythm partner and waltz turns are fun the coordination is hard to get i've seen a lot of students struggle with like you know working with two people and yeah. trying to like get around <laughs> yeah the danseur has to start backwards while yes. turn and then the ballerina would start Front. forwards yes. yeah so they have to go opposite but those are fun as well. Really, really, really fun. And the last step that we will list in this non-ballet category is the mazurka. I love the mazurka! The mazurka is a character step, a character dance step. I feel like people don't talk about character dance enough. We'll put some footage up here of like what character dancing kind of looks yeah. like. What it is, is kind of... It was like like folk dancing. More folk dancing. It was sort of integrated into classical ballet for ballets where you are in a specific town or a specific region right. with their specific folk dances. So that's where yeah. sort of character dance comes in. They took right. those folk dances from actual places and they balletified it. <laughs> balletified it. Mazurka is actually not just a dance step. It is also a sort of rhythm of music. So when something is in a mazurka, it goes one, a two, three, one, yeah. a two, three. So it's not just one, two, three. It has a little bit of a swing in it. Mm -hmm. And the step goes perfectly with that rhythm. Your feet go step, hop, brush, hop, hop step, step, hop, brush, hop. And that coordination is not natural for ballet dancers, but I think yeah. every ballet dancer should learn the mazurka step because it is a big part of a lot of classical ballet rep. What I like about mazurka though, is that when you're doing it, especially when you're doing it and you're travel, meant to travel quite mm -hmm. a bit, it feels like you're just skimming across the floor. Yeah. Because the point for a mazurka is not to, even though you're doing a hop, it's not like an up and down hop. Like your head should not go up and down yeah. when you do the little hop. You're supposed to kind of stay level 
and it just feels like you're just skimming across the floor yeah. and it feels so effortless and weightless it really makes you feel like you're barely touching the ground at all in most cases the mazurka is a very lively piece mm -hmm. and so the music also contributes a big factor of the funness of the step yeah and coppelia coppelia is my favorite mazurka yeah in the whole world that's Absolutely. that piece right there is the most remarkable and most energizing it makes you want to get up on the stage and dance too yeah it does you know it, it's yeah. one of those pieces and the mazurka step how it perfectly matches the rhythm of the music it's the best yeah. it, it's just the best those were our 10 plus two very favorite ballet steps hopefully you guys could learn a little bit more about these steps and also what makes them so very wonderful to dance. If you did not know any of these steps before, we hope we could um, introduce you to some new ballet step vocabulary. I'm sure that you dancers out there have your own list of favorite steps, so please write them in the comments below. We would love to read them. Even for those of you who aren't dancers, let us know in the comments if there's a particular step or a particular passage that you really love to watch in a ballet performance. Let us know in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Even if you don't know the name of the step, you can describe it in your best possible English vocab. Yeah. And we'll try and translate it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure people will be able to help you out if you yeah. don't know what it's called. I'm sure people would be happy to, you know, help you out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. If you like the video, like the video and make sure you subscribe to our channel for excellent quality, exquisite quality ballet content. <laughs> make sure you share this video with a friend, whether they be a dancer or a non dancer. If they're interested in ballet, send it their way. I think they might enjoy it. I mean, that's a bit presumptuous. <laughs> it's worth a shot. I don't know. <laughs> do whatever you want. But if you want to send it to someone, go ahead and do that. And I think that is all from us for now. This is Ballet Rain signing off. Until the next video. Bye. So here we go. This is going to be our top 10 list. I can't clap. <laughs> this is...